In this problem, we're going to evaluate this indefinite integral. So to do this problem, we're going to try to factor the bottom and use partial fractions. If you were to make a u substitution, you would call the bottom u, and you would get 9x squared plus 1. And in the numerator, we have 7 minus x squared, so it's probably not a good uh, route. So let's go ahead and notice that if you factor the bottom, it would look something like this, x parentheses 3x squared plus 1. Then we can use partial fractions and then uh, hopefully work it out from there. So let's try that. So we have 7 minus x squared over and then x parentheses 3x squared plus 1. And this is equal to, well the first piece is linear so it'll just be a over x. And the second piece is 3x squared plus 1. That's a quadratic. And so whenever you have that, you have to have you know, the bx plus c. You always have to have you know, that up top whenever it's a uh, quadratic. OK, so now we're going to clear the fractions. So to clear the fractions, we're basically going to multiply both sides by the denominator of the left-hand side. So I'm going to squeeze it in over here. I don't know if you can see it. Yep, there it is, 3x squared plus 1. So uh, goes away. And then over here as well, uh, x, 3x squared plus 1. So distributing this to the first, well, on the left-hand side, we just get 7 minus x squared. So that part's easy, right, because all of that goes away. And now distributing this over here to this piece, the x's cancel. So we get a parentheses 3x squared plus 1. That's what's left when we distribute that piece. And then distributing here, we would get plus bx plus c. And the 3x squared plus 1 cancels, so we're left with x. OK, so now we're in this position here. So whenever you get to this position in partial fractions, the easiest thing to always do is ask yourself the following question. What can I plug in? that will make things go away and will let me solve for one of the variables. Like what value of x will let me solve for variables? Then you just keep doing that until you can't. And then when you can't, you resort to something called equating coefficients. Okay, so let's think. What can we plug in that will let us solve for one of the variables? I think zero. If we let, if we let x equals zero, look what happens. We'll get seven minus zero squared. So we just get seven equals we get a, 0 plus 1. And then here's the beautiful thing. All of this is just 0 because when you put a 0 here, uh, everything just goes away. So we get 7. Oh, that's nice. So a is equal to 7. Boom. That was nicer than expected. All right, good stuff. So now we still have to find b and c. But you'll notice there's not like an easy number we can plug in. Now, if you wanted to, you could plug in like x equals 1 and x equals 2, and you would get two equations, and then you could just solve them. But instead, let's take a more professional approach. So whenever you exhaust your options, like we have here, right, there's no other value of x that we can plug in that will let us find uh, b and c in one move. So you resort to what's called equating coefficients. So let's do that. So let's equate coefficients. This is a super powerful skill. Uh, that's used also in other math classes. So I actually learned the skill in differential equations. I didn't learn this in, in calculus. It's really powerful. So we start with the highest power of x, which in this case, I guess, is x squared. That's a good place to start. So x squared. So on the left-hand side, you look for the coefficient of x squared. So in this case, it's negative 1. So negative 1. Then you look at the right-hand side. Say, OK, what are the coefficients of x squared? Well, if here, you're going to get a 3x squared. Right? So 3a x squared. So 3a. And then over here, you're going to get bx times x. So bx squared. So b. So you're just matching coefficients. So again, on the left-hand side, there's a negative 1 here. So boom, there it is. On the right-hand side, we get 3a squared. So 3a. And then bx squared. So b. And the good news is we have a. So this implies that negative 1 is equal to 3 times 7 plus b. So negative 1 is equal to 21 plus b. Oh, this is beautiful. Subtracting 21 from both sides is going to give us b equals negative 22. I'm going to put that in a box because that is a major accomplishment. 
So now we just have C. So in theory, you could plug in A and B and one more number and get it, but let's continue down our path of equating coefficients. All right, let me switch colors here. Now we're looking at X terms. You might say, oh, there's no X terms on the right-hand side. Ah, but yes, there are. There's really an invisible zero X here, right? It's there. Uh, you can erase it, and it's not really there because it's zero, but you can think of it as being zero X. So it's zero. So if it's not there, it's just zero. And then on the right-hand side, there's no way to get X from, from this first piece here. There's the only way to get X here is to do CX. So C. Right, CX. So C. The coefficient of X is just C. Oh, look at that. C is zero. How good. That makes it much easier. All right, let's plug everything in now. So we have A, which is 7. So 7 over X. All right, plugging it in here. And then B was negative 22. So minus 22X. C was zero. So that goes away over 3x squared plus 1. So now we just have to integrate both of these, and we're good. So let's do that. So for the first one, we can pull out the 7. Then we'll have 1 over x dx. For this one, let's go ahead and pull out the 22. And we'll have x over 3x squared plus 1 dx. Looks like we do have to make a u substitution here for this uh, second piece. So we'll let u be equal to 3x squared plus 1. These problems are long. I mean, this, this, is, you know, this is a math problem. <laughs> they take a long time to do. And then du, well, that would be 6x dx. And as usual, um, there's no 6 in the problem, so we divide by 6. Because we want to make what we have here uh, match what's in our integral. So this is x dx. Now it matches. So now we have x dx. Unless I pulled out the 22. That was probably a good idea. That way you don't have to mess with it. You know, it just kind of hangs out. Let's keep going. We can go ahead and integrate this first one. It's just 7 natural log absolute value of x minus, and then pull out the 1, 6. So it'll be minus 22 over 6 du over u. I did that kind of fast. Let me just check that. So this x dx is 1, 6 du. So this is 160u. And so there's the 160u. The 22 is there. And the bottom piece is just u. Yeah, it looks okay. So this is 7 ln absolute value of x minus 11 thirds. Right? You can simplify 22 over 6 just by dividing by 2. ln absolute value of u. But u is 3x squared plus 1. And we're almost done. <laughs> Let's just not forget the plus C. It would be really like, I guess funny, but not funny, but to forget the plus C after all of this work. I mean, oh my God, it's just a very long problem. Eight minutes, eight minute video. I did not expect that when I started to make this video. I thought, oh, I'll make a video, it'll take two minutes. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> Some of these problems take, take a while. And this one was really good because this one we got to do the equating coefficients thing, which I think is extremely useful. I mean, sure, it's useful for this problem, but it's more than about just this problem. Like, this is something that you actually use in math. This is extremely powerful if you ever study uh, differential equations. Except uh, when you study that, it won't be x squared. It'll be like sine x terms and e to the x terms and stuff like that. So anyways, I hope this video uh, has been helpful in some way. Good luck and take care.